Okay, Peter, so today I just wanted to do, review, um, you know, the real fight of the weekend, Josh Kelly against uh, David Avisian. A uh, sixth round stoppage for David Avisian. You know, Kelly kind of unraveled a bit after looking so good in the early stages. Just want to talk through that fight and really what it means for boxing and, you know, and, and how we look at it in the broader picture of things. And one of the interesting things I thought about it coming into this fight was, um, you know, how great it was to see the European welterweight title contested with such fervour. You know, because I remember going back to the 80s when, you know, the British title and the European title were stepping stones to the world title and were a real big deal. So it was just great to see, you know, all of a sudden out of nowhere, the European title seems to become really relevant again, uh, really around this fight, which was a real big step up fight for Josh Kelly. And, um, you know, it's something that really the, the, the bookies thought that he was going to do. And even though a lot of trade people called for a Vician, you know, the general feeling was that it was a 50-50 fight, if anything, leaning in favour of the, the almost untapped potential, um, you know, of Kelly. Interestingly enough, the bookies gave... Uh, the, the odds I saw gave five to four uh, for, on Kelly to win, so a slight betting favourite, but five to one um, for Avisian to, to win on points. So, you know, the, the bookies were kind of saying that if it goes to points, Kelly definitely gets it. Whether they were saying that was because of, you know, Avisian was going to be, um, uh, you know, was, was going to fade in the later stages, which I very much doubt, or whether they were saying a points decision for Avisian was unlikely, especially given what happened the weekend before, you have to read into that what you will. But this is also the second time we've seen the main matchroom star, the home fighter, um, you know, in, in, in a week, uh, be upset, obviously, with Josh Warrington last week coming very unstuck against the Mexican and Josh Kelly falling over at the, at, at the hurdle this week. And I just find it interesting to look at this, and Eddie Hearn did bring this up at the, uh, you know, the, the post-fight conference, how difficult it is, he thinks, for these guys to fight in this environment uh, with no crowds at all, where you can hear a pin drop, as he said. Um, and it did remind me, when football came back, as football came back with no crowds, um, we did seem to get this skew of strange results and high scores and things. It seems to have settled down now, um, but I wonder if we're seeing something similar in boxing. But it is great to see all these 50-50 fights coming around and, you know, the upsets show us what we love about the sport, that it does have an unpredictability at the heart of it, um, you know, and, and things can really turn around. So really coming back to the fight, you know, what did we see? Well, you know, like I say, Kelly was uh, 10, 10 wins and one draw coming into the fight. Avisian was 26 fights with three losses. Interestingly enough, one of those losses came in his second fight. Um, when he fought a 3-0 and fighter in his second fight, when he was 1-0. and And this is the interesting thing about this fight. Avisian has come up the hard way. You know, nobody did him any favours. He was a good amateur, a decorated amateur, had over 100 amateur fights. You know, Kelly obviously had that stellar amateur career, you know, culminating in, in going to the, the, the Olympics in 2016, although he didn't medal. Um, but Avisian, when he turned pro, had no one behind him. He had to take hard fights. He fought his way up. And I think that was what told him this fight was that hard upbringing you know in the, in the game of boxing and, and obviously the later two losses came um you know two losses in three fights one of those to lamont peterson um and you know the next one was a tko so it's only stopped once but you know he, he, he th those were really good fights those were real gateway fights to a world title so in a way people were saying well he's found his level you know he's european level he's not world level so i think it was a bit unfair but you know it, but the way he'd come up i thought showed in that fight because josh kelly like i say amazing untapped potential and this is the Think about, you've got to think about, what are you going to do with your prospect when you bring him along? You don't want to put him in too hard too soon, dead his confidence to get him beat. So you, you match him carefully, but at some point you've got to let him off the leash. The disadvantage to matching him carefully is they don't really come across these hungry fighters like Avisian, who, is, who has four other hungry fighters on the way up, like I said, second fight, you know, lo losing that fight to a 3-0 and guy. Um, he's, he's really had to battle to get to where he is. So when the fight unfolded, and we saw those incredible skills of Kelly early doors. I mean, the speed was phenomenal. You know, he was he was twice as fast as Avisian. He had that longer reach. And there were two things I heard from the respective corners, which kind of outlined the fight strategies to me. Um, you know, I think at the start of the second round, Adam Booth leaned over and said to Josh Kelly, let him overreach and counter, let him overreach and counter. So Kelly was going backwards. He was, you know, Navisian knew he needed to close that gap. He was walking into that dangerous space where he couldn't hit Kelly and Kelly could hit him. And then when he was throwing that punch, Kelly was moving back, beautifully countering, pivoting off the foot. And it was it was wonderful to see, you know, the speed, the accuracy, the angles that he was creating. And then I think at the start of the fourth round, Carl Greve said to Avisian, don't let him breathe. Don't let him breathe. So what they were saying is the pressure, keep the pressure on. And it did remind me early doors, you know, I know this comparison will fall down on multiple levels, but it reminded me of Sugar Ray Leonard against Roberto Duran. You know, you had the real slick stylist who, you know, we expected so much from. 
Um, and then you had this kind of grizzled old warrior who said, I want to fight my fight. I want to fight it close. Um, you know, and, 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 and that was the difference. He reminded me a bit, again, another comparison. Mind you. I know people will, will argue about this, but a bit Frazier-like. He wasn't really bothered about losing the early rounds to the faster fighter, but he was constantly pressuring, constantly pressuring, thinking my time will come, my time will come. And that started to tell as he started to close that gap, as he started to find the range, as he started to not overreach, he started to work the body of Kelly. You know, they say kill the body and the legs will, uh, get, you know, and the head will fall. You know, kill the body, take away the legs. That was the policy he was following. And it just started to work. And it's, you started to see him having more success. And whereas Kelly ran away with the early rounds, you know, you sort of started to see the balance of the fight shift in favour of Avicii. And really not, you know, I mean, I would give Kelly the first four, you know, maybe even the first five rounds, if you argue. In the fifth round, he, interestingly enough, decided to push Avicii back. You know, he decided to say, right, I've gone backwards, I've used my speed, I've used my skills, you know, and now I'm going to push you back, try and break the rhythm of this fight where you're coming towards me and constantly pressuring me, you know, take the wind out of your sails a bit. But again, what told was the inside fighting, in the pocket fighting. Avician looked comfortable and he looked like he was landing a lot more shots, nice uppercuts inside, nice hooks to the body inside. And Kelly obviously decided, well, this is not you know, a sensible strategy. I'm going to go back to my boxing. But by this time, he was getting a bit ragged. You know, the wind was coming out of the sails and Avicium put the pressure on. And then in the sixth round, it kind of all unraveled. Those heavy shots came in. But again, you know, not wanting to take anything away from Josh Kelly. You know, he's a superb talent, amazing fighter. He stepped up, you know, a number of levels for this fight. It was a gamble which didn't come off, you know, and I really hope he comes again. But I thought that the unravelling under the pressure that Avicii had applied, you know, if you compare it to when he caught Avicii and say in the second round with that incredible left hook, you know, how Avicii took the pressure that was coming to him and how Kelly took the pressure that was coming to him. I know he was tired, but, you know, I think that was the grizzled old war horse in Avicii just saying, look, I've seen it all before, son. You know, I'll just deal with it and I'll keep coming and I'll keep coming and I'll keep coming and I'll break your heart. And I think that's what happened with Kelly. I mean, you know, Adam Booth is as famous he said about Kelly, you know, he's, he's a warrior that turns into a warrior. So I think the doubts were over his mental strength in this fight. And I think that's where, you know, Greaves and Avician thought that they were going to really, you know, and they did try to rattle him noticeably in the, in the press conferences, talking about the earlier pullouts for the fight. There were rumours of, you know, them coming into training camps, um, uh, training sessions during the bubble, you know, shouting the odds. There was even talk of a punch being thrown. So they were just trying to rattle Kelly, you know, I mean, if he did have any nerves and all this sort of stuff. And I think that did kind of come later in that fight when it was real bite down on the gum shield and fight your way through, you know, it, Kelly just didn't seem to have that there, you know, with those, when those consummate skills were kind of out the window and it was in the trenches, I think he did seem to fold maybe a little bit sooner than we might have seen in the And Adam Booth read his man and very correctly, I thought it was a great throw, you know, great call from the corner. It's not going anywhere, but a bad beat down now. So let's get him out of there. So obviously heartbreaking for Kelly, but, you know, I think good to see a grizzled road warrior who, you know, has never been protected, you know, just just and, and just just comes to fight and we'll, we'll take the money and we'll be in the away corner, come out on top. And let's hope that Avicia now gets, you know, a world title shot, you know, a teak tough guy like that, you know, I think I think really deserves it. So, you know, interesting things happening in boxing, interesting turn ups, you know, and, and like I say, we're going against the home corner now. So let's see what the next few weeks brings. But, you know, I thought it was an interesting development. You know, hats off to Josh Kelly for taking the step up. Hats off to Avician for being Tick Tough Road Warrior and just, you know, bringing his intensity. It was it was a great fight to see, an interesting fight to see. And like I say, I've got to say, as a fan, I hope these type of fights continue because I think it's brilliant for the game.